created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 224 at 109 South Lorena Street. 109 South Lorena. Investigate the trouble. That's all. Rolls and quiz. Gazed fearfully about, 
Then her gaze became fixed in horrified fascination on the open door. Through that door, across the creaking floor, a man moved stealthily, purposefully, toward the bed. The terror-stricken child watched for an eternal moment before a scream broke the stillness of the night. Mama! Mama! There's a man in the room! Mama! Oh, come Mama. Come Mama. What is the matter? Oh, oh, Mama! Mama! There's a man! There's a man! Oh, oh, what do you want? Go away! Leave us alone! Keep your mouth shut! Outside the home of Maria Gonzalez, the June moon still poured its silver light over the sleeping city. Along the sidewalk came Manuel Odea, homeward bound from work. Across the stillness of the bright night came a sound that chilled his blood. Please, stop, please. And Dea paused, listened, strained his eyes toward the house from which the sounds had come. Only the flickering shadows beneath the shuddering palm trees and the faint whisper of their fronds told him that life was here. He wondered if he should investigate. He shrugged and passed on. Thus, Manuel Ordea passed by death. In the home of Carmen Ortega, nearby, the voice of Maria Gonzalez was heard saying, What do you want? Go away! Leave the bedroom! Ah! <laughs> Maria's having trouble with one of her boyfriends, I guess. So Carmen Ortega went back to sleep. And once more, quiet reigned on the moon-drenched street. From the Gonzales' home, a stealthy figure crept noiselessly out of the door and disappeared. An hour and a half later, the measured clop, clop of horses' hoofs broke the stillness of the night. A milkman, making his matutinal rounds, paused at 109 and gazed at an open door. Hmm. That's funny. I wonder if one of Maria's boyfriends left in a hurry. Looks like a man's hat laying on the porch. Funny she'd leave the door open all night. Oh, well, none of my business. Guess she wants a couple of pints as usual. Once again, the stillness of early morning descended on Lorena Street. And in the Gonzales' home, it was also quiet. The quietness of death. Hours go by. Then at the home of Aligo Ortega, a feeble knock is heard at the door. What was that? Aligo, get up. Hmm? Somebody's knocking on the door. Huh? What? Who is it? Well, how should I know? Get up. Go and see. Oh, look out the window and see what it is. Ah, you are a lazy dog. Get up. I don't want to see anybody this time of the morning. Aligo, it's Conchita. Conchita? What she want? But she's all covered with blood. What? Well, open the door. Bring her in. Oh, there must be something wrong. Of course there's something wrong. Don't stand there staring at her. Open the door. <gasps> Madre de Dios. What has happened? A legal look. Oh, Cochita, what is it, Nina? What... Mama, the man beat us. Come help. Mama, she won't get up. There's something tied around her neck. She won't talk to me. A legal hand, quickly, see what it is. Mama she won't is. talk to me. You be all right. Oh, my head hurts so. He hit me. Oh, no, darling. Come, let's try to hold a hot cloth on that bruise. Carmen! Call the police, Carmen! Send the doctor! Call the police! Maria's dead! In response to the frantic calls of Ortega and his wife, ambulance attendants took the injured child to Georgia Street Hospital, while Detective Lieutenants Edward Romero and O. P. Torres arrived to investigate the crime. Come on, come on, come on. Let us through here. Let us through it, Jack. Hey, don't block the door, fellas. Don't block this door. Well, Torres, I see Captain Bradley's already out here. Yes, it isn't far to the Holland Victor. Hello, Romero. Hello, Captain. How are you? Did you boys out of bed? Well, just about. It's all the excitement. Somebody got in and strangled Maria Gonzalez. Beat up her little daughter. Sent the youngster to the hospital a few minutes ago. Oh. Pretty badly beaten up. Oh, that's too bad. Any suspect? Five. Five? Yep. Five good ones. Oh. Where are they? Yeah, well, that's another story. 
That's where you boys come in. Oh, I get it. We just go out and pick up five first-class suspects and bring them in, huh? I've got my boys out rounding up witnesses. Gaskell's in the next room getting all the prints he can find. Well, he ought to be able to get enough to fill a file cabinet around this place. Yeah. And you fellas know these people and their customs out here. You'd better stick on the case. All right, Captain. I'd suggest that you check with the... Mrs. Ortega. Oh. She seems to know more about what's going on around here than anybody else. All right, we'll do that. Oh, here comes Gaskell. I wonder if he's found anything. Did you get anything, Gaskell? And how? Now, the killer came through the living room window there. Huh? He rested his hand on the sill as he came through. I got a distinct palm print, and boy, is it a honey. Just round up your suspects, and I'll pick your man. Well, that's fair enough. Well, let's clear these people out. You can talk to Ortega and his wife. All right. Hey, come on, folks, All outside. Right. Lieutenant Romero wants to talk to Ortega and Mrs. Ortega. Now, you two come on in here. The rest of you will have to get out. Come on. Now, get in there. Well, Mrs. Ortega, what do you know about this case? Well, first, you find Benny Gonzalez. He may know something. Benny Gonzalez? Who's he? He's Maria's husband. Oh, well, where is he? Hmm? Quien sabe? Well, what makes you suspect him? That Benny, he does not like Conchita. This morning, when she come to my house, she tell me a man beat her. His voice sounded like Benny, she said. Oh. I take it Benny is not her father, then. No. Benny and Maria have been married only three years. Conchita is five. Uh, Maria, she had been married before. And you don't know where this Benny guy is now? No, I have not seen him for a long time. He left Maria about a year ago. I have not seen him since. Well, we'll start looking for him. That's suspect number one, Doris. Now, Mrs. Ortega, what, what else do you know? You tell him, Aligo. See. Si. There's another fellow named Mike. Maria used to see him a lot. Mike? Mike who? Uh, Mike Rondo. I think his name is. They had a quarrel about something and he went away. Oh, well, just because a guy has a quarrel with a woman, there's no sign he killed her. Oh, maybe not. Just the same, he didn't like Maria. He said once he would kill her. You see, Maria, Maria, she was a hell cat. She got <laughs> mad when Mike left. She told the police that Mike had a steal on his ranch and they raided him. Oh. That's when he said he'd kill her. Well, Tori, that's two of our suspects. Yeah. Ortega, I don't suppose you know where this Mike is. He has a ranch out close to Ontario. You can find him. You find a fellow named Jesus. He might have done this. Yes, he might. But with half the colony named Jesus, how are we going to find the right one? Well, this one, he works in a clothing store near First and Main. You can find oh, him. Oh, that makes a difference. I know. He tried to give Conchita a nickel. Oh. You, uh... Think he might have done this? Well, he's the sort who would do it. I chased him away from my own little girl once. Maria ran him off once, too. Well, so far, this bird seems like our most logical suspect, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We'll have to question the gentleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't any of you hear anything last night that might have sounded suspicious? Well, me, I hear Maria say, go away, leave us alone. <laughs> I thought maybe she was having another fight with her boyfriend. I didn't pay no attention. Manuel Ordea, his newsboy. Oh. He heard some screams, too, but he didn't go in. And the milkman, he tell me he see the door open early this morning when he delivered the milk, and there was a brown hat on the porch. Well, did he go in? No. He said he didn't think it was any of his business. Oh, I see. Well, what became of the hat? Uh, who knows? With so many people coming in and out. Did you hear anybody else say anything about hearing or seeing anything wrong around the Gonzalez place? No. Except the, the woman who lives next door to Maria. She said she saw Jose Mayen over there last night. Oh, who's he? Oh, he's, uh, he's a friend of Maria's. He works on a hospital there, building over close to Pasadena somewhere, you know. Yes, yes, but where does he live? Oh, oh over on uh, Garrity Street, I think. Oh, and uh, does this woman see anybody else? Uh, she says there was a gray-haired man there about 8 o'clock. Had plenty of visitors last night anyway. Did she know this man? No. Uh, well, Doris, that makes five suspects accounted for. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lieutenant Condapper and Revis... Other members of the homicide squad were endeavoring to ascertain additional facts from little Conchita. Back at headquarters, Condapper confers with Romero and Torres. Revis and I tried talking to the child, but it wasn't any use. She's anxious most of the time and delirious the rest of it. Oh, the poor thing. 
where she lived. The doctor just thinks she may. Part of the time she says something about her stepfather, Benny, you know. And sometimes she mentions Alfredo. Who's Alfredo? Well, we checked up with some of the neighbors and found out that an Alfredo Lejeune is a brother-in-law of Maria. We've sent for him. He's outside now. Want to look him over? Yeah. Let's take him down to 47 and talk to him. Okay. Come on, Lejeune. In here, Alfredo. You know Lieutenant Romero, Alfredo? Uh, uh, no, senor. He's handling the Gonzalez case. He and Torres here. Uh, si, senor. Alfredo, tell me something. Why should Conchita say she heard your voice last night? I, I don't know. Well, I, where were you all night? I was at home, senor. I can prove it. Did you kill Maria Gonzalez? Dios mío, no, senor. I could not do that. Any idea who would want her killed? No, senor. You think Benny Gonzalez might have done that? Oh, no, senor. Benny stayed at my house for a long time after he left Maria. He's been gone almost a year now. Uh, you know where he is? Oh, no, senor. But he might be in town, huh? Well, he might be. I, I do not think so, though. No? Why not? I don't know why, senor, but I do know Benny would not do a thing like this. Well, that's a great help. Do you know Mike Lando? Oh, oh si, senor. He lives on a ranch close to Ontario. Oh, you know where it is? Uh, no, senor. Don Never. Has Gaskell taken this fellow's print? Yeah, ought to be here now. Senor, I've told you all I know about this. I did not kill Maria. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh. Hello, Romero. How are you, Torres? Well, well, what did you find? No soup. This isn't the man. Uh, I'm getting tired of You're it. You're getting tired of it. I'm doing all the work. All right, all right. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Ah, oh, dear. Come on, Al. Let's take a run out to Ontario and talk to this Londo guy. Uh, who's Londo? Londo? <laughs> He's number three on our hit parade of suspects. He'll bring him in and let you take a look at him. Gaskell, this is Londo. Plank his mitt on a card and let's see if it checks. Now listen, you guys. I told you on the way in that I don't know anything about this murder. Well, in that case, you won't have any objections to our process of elimination. No, it isn't that. I just don't like to lose the time from my work. I admit I didn't care much what happened to Maria, but I wouldn't kill anybody. You wouldn't kill anybody? What did you fight about? She had too many boyfriends to suit me. Oh, so you bumped her off, eh? Have I got to go over all that again? No, I didn't bump her off. We had a fight, sure. I went out to the ranch and forgot all about her in a week. Yes, I just bet you did. Sure I did. When I'm washed up. I'm washed off. Hey, when you're washed up, you're washed up. All right, and then what happened? Well, she told the liquor guys that I had a steal out on the ranch, and they raided me. Oh, they did, eh? And then you decided to get even, is that it? I tell you, I never touched the dame. You never touched her, but you did say you'd like to kill her, didn't you? Sure I did. I would have, too. She didn't have no reason to put the cops on me. I hadn't done her any harm. Say, did you have a still? Of course not. That was her story. Oh, how about it, Gaskell? Yeah. Afraid not, boys. Uh, well, I'm beginning to wonder if we have got a murder on our hands. Yeah, we've got a murder, all right, but that seems to be about all. See, I told you, birds, I didn't have nothing to do with this. Well, maybe not. Look here, Mike. Don't go around shooting off your mouth about how you'd like to kill people. Someday it's going to get you into a jam. You're telling me. Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay, you scram now. Get out. Thanks, Romero. Well... Well, <laughs> uh, did you have Conda ever pick up Maine? Yeah, Frank's got him down in the office now. All right, let's go talk to him. Okay. Hello, Eddie. I was wondering what was keeping you. Well, we just got through with Londo. No go? No go. Well, while you were out, we picked up that Jesus guy over on First Street. Have you had him printed yet? Yeah, Gaskell's checking on him. Got Maine's print, too. Is that Maine over there? Yeah. Jose, come over here a minute. Okay, Lieutenant. What's up now? This is Jose Maine, Eddie. Lieutenant Romero is handling the Gonzalez case. Yes, I know. I heard about it this morning. What time this morning? Uh, about 8 o'clock. You're sure it wasn't about 1.30 this morning? Yes, sir, I'm sure. 
When did you see Maria Gonzalez last? About 11.15 last night. What's that? About 11.15. I was there from 8 to about that time. Did you see Conchita during that time? Yes, I, I gave her 20 cents to buy candy with. She came back after buying the candy, and we sat around and played a while before she went to bed. I sat around until about 11.15 and left. Mm -hmm. Was anybody else there during that time? Uh, Ramon Rafael was there. Who's he? Oh, he's connected with one of the welfare agencies over on the east side. He was there to talk to Maria. She's been having a pretty tough time to make ends meet since Benny left. Oh. Say, is this guy an older man, sort of gray? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when did he get there? Oh, about a half hour after I did. And when did he leave? Oh, about an hour later. Did you get those scratches on your face when Maria was choked to death? Of course not. I wasn't there. I got these from a tree I ran into out on the job where I work. All right. Incidentally, Eddie, I checked on that candy story with Jive. Oh. oh, what'd you find, Gaston? Same thing in both cases. Wrong men. Ah, oh, nuts. Thus were eliminated four of the five possible suspects, but a new man had entered the case in the person of the welfare worker. Subsequent check of this man's handprints, however, left no doubt as to his innocence. So far, the police had been unable to locate the woman's husband, and evidence available pointed less and less toward him. Two weeks slipped by, but no further evidence was unearthed. Then, early in July, the telephone rang in the homicide detail. Homicide Romero speaking. I won't tell you my name, so don't waste time asking. Huh? But I think I have some information about that Gonzalez case. You have? What is it? I know a young man who knows a woman who had been in the vicinity of the crime when it was committed. Well, so what? If you want to send somebody down here to talk to me, I'll have the girl come here and give you the information. Want to take down the address? 9000 Main Street. I understand you told this woman who phoned me that uh, you had some information on this case. Well, I don't know whether it's worth anything, but a man I do watch before he came to my house the night Maria was killed. Who was he? Oh, I don't know his name, but he's a section hand on the railroad. Well, that makes it simple. And what happened to make you suspicious? Well, this man, he used to come at night and bring his clothes. And then I'd wash them for him, and he'd come back later and get yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. But the night of the killing, what happened then? Oh, I'm coming to that. This man, he came in that night, and he'd been drinking. Oh, he was awfully drunk. This fellow, his, his first name's Miguel. I, I don't know the last name. Well, Miguel came in and sat around until almost midnight. I tried to get him to leave, but he wouldn't do that. Oh, finally, I got him up. Then I went to bed. I don't know how long I'd been asleep, but something he woke me up. It was somebody calling on the door. Oh, who is he? Miguel, open the door. Oh, go away. I am in bed. I, I want to sleep. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Well, wait a minute. Hey, go away. You cannot come in here. That's what you think. Lock the door. Hey, what's the matter with Lock you? Lock the door. Oh, you're still drunk. Why don't you go on home and sleep it off? I'm not drunk. Give me a drink. Say, don't you order me around like that. I say, give me a drink. All right, all right. You have to yell about it. He had a wild, excited look in his eyes. I was afraid of him. How long did he stay there? Oh, about an hour. And how was he dressed? He had on a blue suit, I think. Blue suit? See any blood on it? No, senor. Did he have a hat? Well, he, he did when he left for the first time. Well, he didn't when he come back. Did you notice what kind of a hat it was? Well, it was a brown felt hat, I think. Brown felt. What did this man look like? Well, he was very dark, and, and he had deep, small pox marks on his face. Well, maybe he's worth questioning. We'll try to find him. If he comes back, be sure and call us. See, si, senor, I will. <laughs> the officers began a systematic check of all railroad employees near Los Angeles. Thousands of names were poured over, but none carried the initial name of Miguel. At last, in the offices of the Pacific Electric Railway, their search ended. According to records, the man they sought worked in Culver City. Boy, what a job that was, checking all those cards to find a Miguel. Say, what's that last name again? 
Olivaria. Miguel Olivaria. Well, if this turns out to be another of Gaskell's wrong man cases, I'm going to resign from the department. Hey, what does it say on that card there? Uh, Section House 17, Culver City. 17, huh? Oh, this ought to be the place right here. Yeah, looks like the crews are just finishing work. Yeah, lucky for us, too. Hey, you. Uh, you. Yeah. You uh, know Miguel Olivaria? Oh, yeah. Miguel Olivaria? Yeah. We'd like to talk to you a minute. Any place we can go where it's private around here? Yeah. In the tool house here. Okay. Let's go. You change clothes in here? Yeah. What you want to see me about? Ever know anybody named Gonzalez? Never heard of her. I didn't say anything about a her. Oh. Oh, I thought you did. Is this your suit, Olivaria? This blue one? Yeah. What are these spots on it? What's it to you? We might as well tell you, Miguel. We're police officers. We're investigating a murder. Murder? Yeah, a murder, and we think you did it. No, I never killed nobody. Who are you on the night Maria Gonzalez was killed? I don't know the Maria Gonzalez. Oh, yes, you do. She was strangled to death on the night of June 14th. Why did you do it? I didn't. I didn't kill her. Where's your hat, Miguel? Over there on the nail. No, I mean the brown one. I lost it about a month ago. Come on, get your stuff. We're taking you to headquarters. <laughs> Gaskell to come in here, will you? Sure. What are you going to do with me? Keep you in jail till you're tried for the murder of Maria Gonzalez. You can't do that. Why not? I didn't kill nobody, I tell you. We'll find out about that. Yeah, other suspects, any? Yeah, and I'll stake my buzzer on this one. I had Pinker run a test on that suit of Miguel's. Those spots are human blood. Huh? Yeah. I thought so. Well, let's get his paws inked and see what they show. Put your palm down on that pad, Olivaria. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. Now on this card. So, oh. like that. Huh? Take a look at this. Well, well, Eddie. Well, what? I'm afraid your hunt's over. You've got your man. The prints compare perfect. No, you can't do this to me. I did not kill her. I didn't climb through that window and kill her. What? I didn't... what did you say? I did not climb through that window. Oh, damn it, Mio. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too, Miguel. Nice work, Miguel. I did not do it. I did not. I wouldn't have been so sure, Olivaria, if you hadn't pulled that crack about the window. You see, we purposely failed to mention that point. That little slip of the tongue will probably break your neck. In just a moment, Chief Davis will conclude our story. Of course, you're not pursuing criminals or driving to fires, but the police car qualities of Rio Grande Cracked include not only quicker starting, smoother acceleration, and the maximum speed of which your car is capable, but greater reserve power for steep grades and lower cost per mile operation whether you drive like the wind or cruise along at a snail's pace. The next time you need gasoline, wheel into the nearest red and white Rio Grande station for a tank full of Rio Grande cracked. The gasoline that makes your motor equal to any emergency. The gasoline that lightens the load on your motor and your pocketbook. Rio Grande cracked. Miguel Oliverio to court with the damning palm print and the theory that he had killed Maria Gonzalez in a drunken, lustful frenzy. A jury agreed with us, and Judge William S. Baird sentenced Oliverio to life imprisonment with an additional sentence of 50 years for his brutal attack on little Conchita. The six palm prints solved our case. Thank you, Chief Davis. <laughs> Police calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 224. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Quiz.
narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.